Hey, what's up guys, it's Fish here, and welcome back to another Warhammer Total War battle. We are back with another custom map battle, and you may remember me playing this map not so long ago. I think I played it like maybe three, four months ago, and at that point we just had a, a normal kind of entrance to the mountain, and there was nothing else in the form of like walls and siege towers and stuff like that. However, now they have got, the modder has gone ahead and implemented three, no, four gates into this map, and I think it just looks absolutely spectacular, the way that, you know, he's just taken like, kind of like a simple design of a mountain defense, and just added walls and passageways and all this lovely stuff where we can fight over and the orcs can climb over and try and you know push back the uh, the dwarven defenders and it just kind of really does accumulate what i wanted from warhammer and sieges you know i can't imagine this would have been too crazy for the warhammer team to do and it's just sad but we're never going to get that and we actually have to rely on the modders to make these amazing looking siege maps because they are absolutely awesome and i can't wait to get this battle started so what we will do is we'll run through the map really quickly and it's, it's very simple you know we have this outer wall with three gates up on all these passageways these passageways then lead down to kind of almost like the second choke point layer of defense right here on either side there's also a really cool uh, side gate all the way over here which you can see and i love like how the stairs just all go up into the side of the mountain i think that's really cool and then we'll run through the army comps again really quickly i don't like sticking too long on these army comps because you guys already know what all the units are and if you don't then i'm sure we'll see them in battle i'm also using the minimal uh, ui thing as well just because i Again, I, I really like it when I can just watch battles like this and keep an eye on the HP and without the flags just being like in my face. I, I think it's much more enjoyable from a viewing point of view. But that's all up to you guys. Let me know if you guys want to see, you know, see this UI like it is, where these are a lot, a lot smaller, or would you prefer to be back where it is normally when they're much more in your face and I can just press K to go cinematic. Do let me know. So the dwarfs, we have three dwarven players. We have a Karakazul player. We are using, I think, six or seven mods in this, with the main one being the Steel Faith Overhaul mod. The other ones are all just like faction unlockers and graphic changes, basically. But I'll link them all in the description down below so you can check them out along with the map so we have Karakazul, we have uh Karak ingor and we have the uh the one with forgrim i'm uh, not forgrim sorry whoever whoever i can't even remember his name if i'm honest i've literally got drawn a mind black whoever this guy is i literally cannot remember for the life of me uh, who it is but yeah we have a lot of long bids on this front line which are going to be holding the uh the main part of the walls we also have some rangers who will be harassing the lines i love this little addition right here we have a perfect over look and this is what like siege battles are all about the defenders you know having these awesome fortifications which are in the favor of them instead of just having one wall we have all these little choke points and positions for the archers and crossbowmen who will be you know using these death traps trying to get the attackers to come into the death traps and slaughter them we also have some miners up on this wall which is actually a really devastating uh unit to stick on the wall because as the enemy approach they can throw their explosive satchels over the over the walls themselves and it will just do so much damage to the oncoming attackers. We also have an organ gunner, organ gunner crew set up right here. Again, looking over the main central wall. We also have some more of the thunderers and uh, more long beards, hammerers, and obviously axemen as well. If we look at the York army, we have uh, a pretty nice uh, force of goblin meat shields along with the doom diver catapults. We also have an army of arachnoroks over here along with Skarsnik leading them and trolls, and then we also have some squigs as well, which will be making themselves around the flank. We also have a pretty dirty army of these of these nasty skulkers who have vanguard deployed around the side gate. So it's going to be a hard fight for the dwarves who have currently garrisoned out here you know we have a few iron breakers so i'm sure they'll be enough and they also have a little bit they have a feign to lead them as well which is very cool along with these thunderers so yeah i wonder if the nasty scorkers will be able to overwhelm this with like a surprise attack or not but if we go back to the main uh, part of york army we just have some orc boys along with some black orcs with shields i believe we have some black orcs with shields somewhere uh yeah right here obviously this is part of the steel faith overhaul mod um we also have some of the orc biggins uh, again these guys looking sick of the black orc biggins you know, just more ferocious than normal Black Orcs. Crimson Killers, some giants. Um, and then if we look at the final Orc army, again, we can see more Black Orcs, more trolls, more giants, more Black Orcs with shields, and a lot of artillery, which is going to be our starting point for this battle. So let's go ahead and get this battle started as the artillery pushes itself into position. And again, I mean, just look at 
that fortress. It really is absolutely amazing. Some of the Dwarven artillery exchanging first. However, the York artillery is going to be returning fire very, very quickly. And just look at all the rocks coming in. They're going to be harassing the, uh, the Goblobber. Trying to take out a catapult or some of the crew to stop it from shooting. As the artillery just comes in relentlessly. And you just look at all the armies moving up. Like this is this is what Total War siege battles should be about. You know, some epic war. And it's not even like this is a crazy siege, you know, with loads of little paths. It's pretty simple, you know. There's a few paths, a few alleyways and stuff like that. It's nothing too crazy whatsoever. So the miners are going to be a really useful force uh, when the enemy do get closer and closer to the wall. But it looks like though the central force is going to be focusing down this tower. It's already taken 55% damage now as the artillery continues to come in but i imagine it will be going down very soon it's probably what up to like 60 yeah, almost 70 percent now the artillery is going back and forth but this is what i'm talking about right now is the miners the miners are now going to be getting their satchel charges ready to lob over this wall the archer fire is also coming in from the rangers but that's not going to be the main issue you can already see it happening over there look at that look how many of them just come flying over the wall it is so brutal and that just incinerates literally incinerates the orc unit and they're just no more there's a few of them still left remaining but they're going to get the hell out of there as another mining volley comes in it's just so brutal and them units are just literally no more luckily reinforcements are still coming up the artillery is definitely going to be helping out because I believe these towers have now gone down. You can see they both collapsed and the uh, towers will no longer be shooting. However, the orcs are going to be climbing up. And this is actually a glitch in the game. Um, then uh, there should be a ladder there, but the, the map has messed up. However, I really, really, really prefer it this way. I think, one, it makes a lot more sense than just the orcs pulling out ladders out of nowhere. But also, it kind of very much feels, you know, very, like very orky if that makes sense at all you know the orcs actually just climbing up the battlements you know to climb over the walls i feel like that is kind of you know that's very like telling to how the orcs play as like a savage savage force so they're going to be making their way onto the front gate now um and trying to smash that down with all of their giants who will be pushing up to the gate now they are taking a lot of missile fire obviously these rangers up here as well will be shooting again that is just so cool like look at that you, know, you just don't get that in Warhammer, and it's just such a shame. You know, these fortresses were built to be defended. You know, they, they have traps, and they have, you know, places where they want to try and force the defenders into. And here we go. The giants are going to be breaking through the right gate. The artillery is coming overhead as the giants push in. I'm sure his buddy will be joining him very soon. We also have this. Uh, we also have Wazog moving in as well. I don't, I don't. I always dislike Wazog when he's not on his, when he's not walking, because he's not dancing. And I believe he should always be dancing. This gate's actually gone down, but it doesn't look like there's any force being pushed up to it. Oh, there's a few units being pushed up, but the majority of this army has actually decided to go around the flank. This is really smart because the dwarfs honestly do not have enough to defend this if this entire army comes in. And I'm not sure if this is all fog of war and the dwarfs can't see it. But they definitely need to retreat back some units ASAP because if they don't, they're going to easily get overwhelmed. Like, really easily. The main gate is also down as we do have Grimgor, Ironhide and his giant crew moving up and they're going to be ripping apart these guys. Yeah, they definitely need to fall back with whatever they can because at the moment that gate definitely does look lost. Where are the, where are the, like, the Iron Breakers and all that lovely stuff? I really am curious because the Black Hawks are obviously just going to ruin them. The artillery is still coming out. I believe we're about to get a foot of Gork here. Or do we get an here we go, here we go, here we go. The miners are throwing in the explosive satchels on top of the giants made just look at them they're just encased in fire and the giant is not gonna like that as he comes onto the miners hitting so many of them to the ground starting to capture a few of these points as well as the crimson killers make their way through the gate as well what do we have here oh we actually have some iron bring are these iron drakes or these torpedo ones i think these are the, the torpedo ones the shoulder guard yeah what do they even have back here? Do they have many elite units? Yeah, they have, I guess, some iron breakers and hammerers, but I think they need to start falling back from these positions. Like, this force right up here, what is it? I think it's this characters all need to start bringing their army down because the gates and the walls definitely look like they're about to be lost if they are not careful. Like, the good thing is these rangers are having a field day shooting at all these enemy units. 
you know, it's really easy for these guys to constantly be shooting and getting their shots off against the enemy ranks, but it definitely does, does look like that they are being slowly overwhelmed, and soon enough they are not going to be able to hold this fortress for much longer. They just need to continue just to push on the enemy. And hope they can slot the enemy because, again, a foot of Gort going down. What did that foot of Gort go down onto the great... Oh, this was the uh, long beards with great weapons by the looks of it. That's what I believe these guys are. Yeah, oh, they were grumbling guards. So, yes, oh, I was right. The hammers are also getting stuck in there. Where are the slayers at? The artillery is now finding its mark. It looks so awesome as well. Just, like, look at that. This is, like, such a cool city. I remember playing this back, uh, back a while ago. Um, and we ended up having like an epic last stand right here with all the dwarves pushing into the gate. Oh nice, we do actually have some soldiers still left in reserve back here as well, some iron breakers. That's pretty useful. Where are the thunderers though? The thunderers need to get up here. Oh, that's so cool. That's like the Game of Thrones, they're, they're, they're like axes just lit a flame as they get ready to go into battle. It's kind of like um, the uh, for us when, he, when they touch their swords when they were beyond the wall, that was so awesome. And we just set them alight. I was like, shit, boy, that's, you know shit's about to go down when they light their swords on fire. This is so cool. And Beric as well. The Crimson Killer's going up against more of the uh, Warriors of Dragonfire Pass. But it looks like they are also regenerating. Yeah, it does look like they're getting more regeneration. Oh, how's the battle over here going? Is it kicked off yet? Yes, the Nasty Skulkers are starting to overwhelm the defences here. It's pretty hard to actually look and see. Oh, I think this wall is under development. Yeah, by the looks of it, this wall was actually under under development. So I guess the the defenders can't put any soldiers actually up there because of what the, the what the dwarfs have. Like they can't put soldiers up there because it's under development. It's being defended right now. That is pretty cool. Uh, these thunderers need to be pushed up because this is the perfect time for these thunderers to do damage against the Arachnid rocket and against the. Uh, against the trolls and the rest of the infantry. Yeah, there we go. The first couple shots going off. They both need to get... Oh, it's actually a unit of, of rangers. My bad. A unit of corridors there. God, the range on these thunderers are insane. Yeah, they need to start doing as much work. Because if they get overwhelmed, the defences over here are just not going to be enough to hold. That is for sure. Especially with all the artillery shots coming in as well. Having all these catapults up here is just brutal. The right gatehouse is still holding though, just about. We have the ethereal runesmith who is going to be, I imagine, you know, pushing these dwarfs over the edge. This looks so cool. I literally am just in awe of this city. I really like what the modder has done here, you know, it's nothing too crazy, and I think that's what, one of the things that um, a lot of modders kind of do, they try and make, which is cool, it's cool in its own right, 100%, like, they try and make these insanely big custom maps, you know, and that's that's totally cool, because when you're making Altdorf and stuff like that, you want it to be as big, but unfortunately this game just can't run enough units to make that, like, feel like you're using the entire city, whereas the stuff like this, it's got very simple ideas, and there's a lot of maps out there which do this, where they have like really simple ideas, but they kind of just make it feel epic, you know, because at the end of the day, this is just one long wall, you know, technically this is just one wall of defense. However, you know, there's also like a side passage which can come round the back of the mountain. You have all these statues and like just having these additional things, you know, there's a lot going on in a really small space and it kind of provides you to have free attacks on the wall at once. And I think that's just really cool. Uh, I definitely am a fan of this map and hopefully we'll get to see more of stuff like this. I'm also really excited for when we get to see uh, when we get to see more maps in Warhammer 2 because I'm hoping that the models will be able to start making maps from the get-go with Warhammer 2. That'd be amazing having you know, the Warhammer team models kind of I'm sure that'll make them feel revitalized as well to start making these amazing maps because the Warhammer community for, mod, for maps and modders are just absolutely amazing. And I'm going to be following them 100% 100% of the way. So if you're looking forward to custom maps in Warhammer 2, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. I'll be uploading campaigns and battles on the game itself. So if you are new to my channel and you're like, oh, I wonder what this kid can do, uh, make sure to subscribe because we'll be uploading a ton of videos when it does come to Warhammer 2 coming out, which is only, what, like 28 days away now by the time... Probably by the time I'm uploading this, like 26 days away, which is just awesome. 
We do actually have some uh, some dwarfs still left remaining up here, as as we have some gobos just I guess guarding the uh, the artillery pieces. I'm surprised these guys aren't being pushed up yet. But yeah, we just have some gobos. I guess they're waiting for these guys to move away. This is also like a perfect situation for the uh, the orcs uh, to move around the flank and overwhelm them. How is the attack coming over here now? I imagine surely they are overwhelming the iron breakers. The arachnok has gone down. But everyone else does seem like they're coming out on top. Yeah, these Iron Breakers are looking pretty low. Especially now that the Trolls have managed to get through the uh, front lines. They're going to be charging onto the Thunderers. And that's going to be all she wrote for the Thunderers for sure. They're going to pull out their axes, try their best. But I don't think it's going to be good enough. Especially as the Quarrelers have to go in. But the Trolls will be ripping these guys a new one. That is for sure. However, the Dwarfs have decided to start to pull back some units. They've gone ahead and brought back some of the weaker units which have already been fighting. A few of the Grumbling Guard. Uh, they also have some artillery back here. And some uh, Longbeards as well. But it does look like they're going to be broken on every single flank. Which is not too healthy. The Iron Breakers still throwing their satchel charges. Showing why they are so good. I think maybe a couple of these squad throwers are going to make their way back, but maybe not. It does look like the giant is moving up. I love this little mace weapon that Black Hawk did have. I say did have because he just got slain by the brave stunty dwarfs. You can see all the archer fire coming in as well against these guys. I'm really surprised that none of the uh, none of the orcs have pushed any forces up here. I mean, how many forces do the orcs even have left? I guess it's not too much, actually. There's actually another unit of rangers up here as well. Ufa's raiders. I guess, I guess the orcs don't have a lot of men left. They have these gobos, but the dwarfs definitely have a strong force. And there's just like a lot of creatures left for them. If we look at the balance of power, we can see that the enemy, the, the orcs, still have 2,000 soldiers left. And the allied troops only have around about 1,500. Um, so I don't know. This battle could literally go either way. I mean, it's also cool that this is like a 25-minute battle as well. You don't really get to see that too much with Warhammer. And, you know, I guess that's one of the things that the... Uh, the uh, oh, there's another... There's two more Arachnoroks still left to come. Jesus. And all these Squig Riders as well as the Nasty Skulkers do get pushed into the battle to help them out. Yeah, you can see them right there. Brutal. Yeah, the Iron Breakers are starting to run. I'm impressed by them. They held for like 10 minutes, so you cannot hate on them whatsoever for holding for that long. And it's just these guys being pushed up now. I'm really interested to why they're getting regeneration. Like, I'm really I'm really confused what like what's giving them regeneration. Again, I haven't really played a lot with Steel Faith before, so I'm not 100% sure. The organ guns are opening up. Organ guns are such a goddamn good unit. We also have the flame cannons as well. The flame cannons must be doing a lot of damage to all the unarmored orc units which have been pushed up. Along with thunderers and the torpedoes. This is like a death trap. But this is what the castle should be like. This is what the fortresses should be like. They should be built to be defended, you know? There's no other reason to have them. There should be these alleyways and places to funnel in enemy attackers. And you should just need a lot of enemy troops to take over the fortress. You know, there, there's what, like, in the law, the dwarves held up against, you know, hundreds, like, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm over-exaggerating a bit. Let me know in the comments, but, I, like, I'm pretty sure, you know, Karak, uh, Karak Uncle, or, or, like, I don't know, what is it? What's the, um, Karaz Karak, obviously, I don't know why I can remember that. Karaz Karak has never been taken, and it's held off, you know, against hundreds of thousands of orcs when there's, you know, when the, or when the dwarves have been outnumbered, you know, one to a thousand enemies. And they've held off, or maybe even more than that, I don't know. But yeah, the dwarfs have like held off against huge numbers. And that's something that I feel like Warhammer again definitely does lack. Now, granted, Warhammer is a beautiful looking game. I think that's definitely one of its strengths. God, sorry, I, di I didn't mean this video to turn into uh, what I like and what I dislike about Warhammer, so I apologize. I'll get back to the gameplay itself. What is actually hitting over here against these uh, archers? Because the archers are, I guess, focusing down a lot of the reinforcements coming in. Uh, and where are these, are these guys are actually routing? Wow, that's not good for the York forces. I don't think the Yorks are going to be able to take over this uh, this fortress. As the dwarves have a lot left, like a lot left, especially if they can deal with this. They have their thunderers shooting, and the thunderers are going to be doing some great damage. As the enemy get closer and closer, the squigs are going to be able to rip through this front line, though. And especially with the Arachnrock. But I think there's also like an organ gun. Yeah, there's an organ gun back here as well. So if the organ gun can get any shots off, that's going to stunt up a lot of the attack. But here we go, the Arachnorok coming in. And I mean, these dwarves, their charge defense was pretty nice right there. 
What are these guys? Do these guys have charge defense? Uh, they're just unit. They don't even have charge defense. Well, it looks like they didn't. It wasn't up on their little thing right there. They definitely held that line really nicely as the, the second Arachnorok comes in as well. And it's going to be a hard fight. You know, obviously these squigs are anti infantry, but the, this it looks like a really good infantry unit. And we're also going to have a Runesmith coming in. He's going to be popping, what, like Oath of Perseverance, the Oath of Steel um, as well, and the Rune of Negation. So that's definitely going to be a strong, especially with these Thunderers back here. I feel like the Dwarfs have got this, but they've definitely, definitely lost a lot of units trying to hold this fortress. You can see the Organ Guns falling back as well. But, I mean, these Thunderers just have such a good position. The fact that their infantry is holding is just allowing the Thunderers to get so much damage, so much free damage off on these Arachnoroks, even though they are pretty tanky. And if this Arachnorok wanted to, it could just run directly onto these guys and destroy them because it doesn't look like there's a, there's a thick line of enemy infantry whatsoever. So these guys could easily move on as we do have the trolls pushing up as well. So maybe not. Maybe the dwarves are going to lose this because they, they're getting beaten back here on my side. But they're definitely going to run out of men. We do see, though, that the majority of the Dwarven forces out here have managed to rout the enemy army. So I guess we're going to be seeing everyone running back right now uh, to try and hold up that right flank. They also love this position right here. Look how awesome that looks. Just you've got the you've got the soldiers up here. You've got the huge statue holding up the massive rock. I like to think as well. If the dwarfs were ever, like, ever about to lose this fortress, what they would do is they would just, like, blow the arms off this, uh, of this statue, and the mountain would just come down, blocking the fortress entrance. I think that would be so cool. You know, that would be amazing. The cannons are still shooting, but I don't think there's, like, any dwarfs left remaining. So I guess the main, the final fight will be over here. This will determine who does come out on top. We also have some random, uh, we actually have Grimgore. Is Grimgore alive or is he routing? Yeah, this is one of the dumb things is how the enemy route uh, backwards. I just always thought it was a bit silly. Uh, and Grimgore is still alive, but he's routing, you know, through the enemy. Uh, this just doesn't make much sense. Uh, so it doesn't like that the Arachnox have managed to completely surround uh, the, the Iron Breakers back here, bringing up more Spiderlings to help with their numbers. But I think it's just a, a matter of time until all the dwarfs get back here to help out. Um, however, the balance of power is pretty even, like, compared to what it was. It definitely has gone back down. And um, that's something I like about the Steel Faith mod as well. Is in, in normal Warhammer, the balance of power is very telling to who's going to win the battle. And I feel like in Steel Faith, because the battles last longer, it provides you more time for strategy. And it allows you to do more stuff which can, you know, change the balance of power. Unfortunately, though, these Thunderers are being ripped apart by the Arachnoroks, and they're going to be getting onto the cannons as well. We are going to see the Peak Gate Guard with their awesome-looking capes being pushed against the Arachnoroks. How healthy are they? They're still pretty healthy. They definitely have a chance of pushing them back. Obviously, all the reinforcements are literally just retreating, and I feel like if the Dwarves can rout the enemy... Yeah, because I think a lot of the balance of power which the Orcs still have left are units which have come back from routing but are pretty weak. I feel like if the Dwarves can retreat everything back, and surround this Arachnorok and kill the Arachnorok. So I think that's the only thing holding this Orc army together is the Arachnorok. So if they can kill them with getting their reinforcements back, I think they definitely have this battle. But it's actually killing them, which is going to be the main issue. You can see all the soldiers moving in as well. Oh, I actually never noticed that before. We have a really cool looking... Uh, yeah, we actually have a really cool little looking banners on either side of us. That's a nice addition. I like that a lot. The banners are a bit tattered, but that's cool. I like that like, kind of attention to detail. So it's just going to be up to the Arachnoroks. And I guess this is like a punishment for the dwarfs to bring in any slayers. Or like, I guess they didn't really have enough thunderers as well. They're definitely, you know, having a, an issue to actually deal with these Arachnoroks. But they are slowly going down. And I think the fact that the dwarves have the weight of numbers, you can see the balance of power is going in their favor a bit more, and a lot of the enemy units are dropping. And I think it's literally once these Arachnoroks go, that's going to be it. They are going to get a really nice charge, though, off onto the side of the dwarves. And that's going to be throwing a lot of them to the ground as they vomit and uh, swing their clubs around, hitting the dwarves on every single side.
This has been one of my more favourite... This has been one of... That's not even English right there, Jackie. What are you talking about? This has definitely been one of my uh, one of my better replays I think I've gotten recently. This has been a lot of fun to cast. I think the map's been awesome. The battle was awesome. So a massive thank you to my Discord. If you want to be a part of these battles, make sure to join my Discord. Yeah, I feel like that was awesome. So yeah, cool. We're going to go and speed it up now that the battle is pretty much over. As we have Grimgore coming back from routing behind the enemy. Yeah, that makes sense, of course. Uh, so yeah, massive thank you to the Discord for sending this in. This was really good uh, indeed. I also have another battle from my Discord as well, which I'll be uploading this weekend. So make sure to uh, look out for that and uh, make sure to drop a like on that video when you do see it. So if we look at the kills, did anyone rack up a crazy amount of kills? Everyone, not really. The Dwarfs of Genaku did pretty good. Clan Angrim, oh my god, how did I not remember that? Clan Angrim, and what's his name? Belagar. Belagar, yeah, Belagar Ironhammer. I can't believe I couldn't remember that in the beginning of a replay. I do apologize. The Flame Cannon and the Organ Guns, oh, that is gross. And the Iron Breakers as well, that's disgusting. Uh, oh, wow, nice Harry Hobbit with a Sky Hammer. It's very rarely you get to see the Gyro Bombers and the Gyro Copters actually getting a lot of kills. We also have some decent kills on the Black Orcs. Um, unfortunately, though, the Giants didn't really excel too much. Um, hopefully, they will be able to do better next time. The Trolls doing really nice over here. And then we have the Crimson Killers, I think, doing the most kills in this army. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this battle. If you did, please make sure to drop a like and a comment, as this was such an awesome battle. And I want these battles to kind of get out there to more people. And obviously, by dropping a like, then it does help, there, help the video get out there to more people. And it also shows me that you guys enjoyed this as well. So yeah, make sure to drop a like and a comment. I'll see you guys next time, and fish out.